Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big praise clap. Now, that's good if it's from me, but let's bless his name this afternoon. Amen. Amen. I, I want to I say this before I go any further. You guys are phenomenal. And to see the level of love and grace that's in this atmosphere, I honor the man and woman of God. We give it up for pastor and co-pastor. Amen. Now, we can do better than that. Amen. Let them know how much you really love them on today. Amen. Amen. We, we definitely honor the man and woman of God on this day and even as they celebrate uh, their anniversary. And I had the opportunity just uh, just the last couple weeks uh, weeks ago, we were together with uh, Apostle Fred Ryan for a leadership uh, conference and just uh, we were ministered to doing that session. And your pastor and I, we just sat together. We had talked several times before and down through the years, but that was my first time actually sitting at a table to meet, uh, to meet and to converse with him and to see what God is doing with him and his precious wife. Let's give God a great big praise for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go, go ahead and take your seats. Take your seats. You know, it's, it's just a little mini iPad, ain't but so many ways you can work it. It's so <laughs> somebody point to me, say, point to me, say, help him, Lord, help him, Lord. <laughs> a, 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 man. So, so what? Once again, just grateful uh, for, for for the opportunity. We're going to go into uh, the Word of the Lord, but I, I want to share with you, even as. Uh, um, as your pa uh, pastor indicated, just our connection down through the years and just flowing in apostolic ministry for years and fivefold ministry. I'm, I'm excited to see what God is doing here at Spirit of Fire Fellowship. And I want you to know that your best days are yet ahead. And, and I want you also to, to understand what God is doing in the earth realm uh, today in this hour that is not based on how many people we gather, but it's based on our capacity. When we look at the word of God, we see, even in the word of God, we see uh, how, how the shepherd leaves the 99 and go for the one. And we look at that from a perspective of an evangelistic outreach. But when we look at it from a perspective of capacity, that he leaves the 99 because the one has the capacity that the 99 don't have. And so I want you to lay hands on yourself and say, I'm high capacity. Now say it one more time, I'm high capacity. Now, let's put our hands together and let's celebrate being high capacity. Amen. 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 I, I, I have this book I wrote. Uh, it just came out last year entitled Gatekeepers. It deals with the 12 gates of Nehemiah from an apostolic and a prophetic uh, perspective. And so I believe these gates are, are pivotal for us to tap into what God's doing in the earth realm. Because now it's not about following a religious order. Now it's not about what we're wearing and what we're driving. Now it's about establishing the kingdom of God. And when we talk about that, he says, what I'm doing in the last days, he says in these last days, I'm creating new wineskins. And so even as he creates new wineskins, they are going to be conducive for a download of the spirit of God to be activated in our lives, in our ministry, in our business, so that whatever we do, that we will do exploits and we will represent the kingdom of God like never before. But we have to catch a hold of it because this is not grandmama's religion. <laughs> This is not two hymns responsive reading. 
in, in a happy meal. But this is about spending time in the presence of the Lord and being uh, receiving the, the fresh oil that's being released in our life. So I want to encourage you, uh, those uh, right after service, this is going to be available uh, uh, in, in the back. But I really want to just go right in, right into the word. I want to go right into the Word. And I hadn't even planned on bringing the books. I just keep them in my trunk, and I, I shared with, with uh, the armor bear. I said, well, just go ahead and get them just, 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 just in case, because I believe this is a house that's not governed by entertainment. <laughs> Look at your neighbor. Ain't no entertainment going on here. Amen, amen. But, but you focus on the meat of the Word of God, and you focus on substance. So, so even as we look at as we look at the Word of God, and we honor those who are here as well as those who are watching by by social media. I want to share with you just some things that the Lord's been speaking to me personally, but I believe it's to be amplified to the body of Christ and to those who have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. When we look at John chapter 1, verse number 1, and, and I knew it was a prophetic house, but y'all heavy prophetic up in here, all right? So t tell your neighbor, this is heavy prophetic up in here. Yeah, yeah. But, and so, so I'm going to release some things to the atmosphere, but also I'm going to be sensitive to the leading of the Lord as we flow uh, today. We thank God just for that awesome intercessory prayer time and how he says, my house shall be a house of prayer. And so often we rely on our ability and our might, but God says what I'm desiring to do in the earth realm, I'm going to need men and women who are sensitive to my voice. And the only way we become sensitive to his voice is spending time with him. And so, so we look at that, that of the intercessory ministry and even the worship ministry, just the whole atmosphere. I want you to know, Spirit of Fire, that you all are uh, apostolically aligned for the greatest release, not only in, your, in the ministry, but in your life personally. And even as you have come through an alignment, that's why your warfare has been so severe this year. Because the enemy knew that if he could wipe you out, if he could discourage you, if he could frustrate you, that you would not tap into the overflow that God is desiring to release in your life. And even I, I hear the Lord saying to share with you, many of you have gone through rejection. You've gone through pain. People that said they would be with you uh, uh, for always and everything. And, and, and now they're no longer in your life. But I want you to understand what God is doing. God is literally kicking out the props. He's removing the props in everything that you used to lean on. In this hour, you can't lean on that. And so God says, I'm removing the props. And even, even as he says, I'm removing the props and what I'm doing, I'm disassembling. Somebody say disassembling. He, 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 you thought your life was tore up this year. You thought, God, what in the world are you doing? God says to say to you, I've disassembled you so that I can reassemble you because I'm about to release the greatest glory on your life you have ever experienced. And even though it was hard, you pass the test. And even as you pass the test, God says, I'm, a, I'm now about to release to your life new wine. Somebody say new wine. New wine, new wine, new wine, new wine. Can we put our hands together and give God a praise right there for new wine? You ain't go through all that hell for nothing. Now, the enemy came up like a flood. He attacked you from one battle to another. But I'm here to declare that you are victorious and that you are about to walk into your winning season, your season of victory, your season of kingdom alliance in everything that the Lord has spoken to you. 
that there's not a word that he has shed in your spirit that won't be realized. Every word, every word, every, somebody say every word. Every word that God spoke into your life is coming to pass. Now, if y'all believe that, can we put those hands together and praise him? It's, it's, it's coming to pass. It, it, it's, it's coming to pass. Some of you should have been in a graveyard. Some of you should have been in a straitjacket. Some of you should have been incarcerated. But the presence of God said, I've kept you. And even as I kept you, I've kept you so that all of creation is now waiting for the manifestation of sons and daughters. Those who are connected to me and those who hear my voice and those who walk after not only my voice, but they walk after my spirit and they, 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 they're not governed by the flesh. They're not governed by the ego. They're not governed by what folk are saying, but they are led by the Spirit of God. Let's give God a great big praise in here. Now, I'm just releasing something. This ain't going to be no three-point and all of that. And uh, uh, ain't he all right and won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he do it? No. Tell your neighbor, we know that already. <laughs> Amen. But you, but you, you know, one, one thing that the Lord shared with me, uh, even during this season while I was uh, just meditating and just seeking the heart of the Lord, he, he began to, to, to share with me out of John chapter 1, verse number 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And so I'm just reflecting, I right, so God, I got to get back to your word. I can't rely on other folk words. I got to get back to your word because you said heaven and earth is going to pass away. So I can't focus on what other folk are saying, but I must focus solely on what God is saying. We see according to, to this word in the beginning was the word and the word was with God in the word was God. But look at verse number 14. This is what God uh, dropped on my heart that I want to release to you. And the word became flesh. The word became flesh. God says what I'm doing and what I desire to do in your life. I'm now desiring to make your word flesh. I'm now desiring to make your word manifest it. I'm going to manifest your word. What you are saying in this hour is pivotal to where God's taken you. And I want us to understand, we, we look at the word, the word of God, and he says, uh, for every idle word that we say, we have to give an account for it. Look at this. What is an idle word? An idle word is a faithless word. A word that's not rooted and not grounded in faith. And he says, what I'm doing in your life now, every idle or every faithless word you say, you now must give an account for it. And so, so even, even as you, you, you give an account for it, God says, as we go into this year, as we go into this year, even as he said to Daniel that I'm coming for your word. Now, if you are not saying anything, he doesn't have anything to come for. But he says, I'm going to manifest your word. 
going to allow your word, what you have been saying, I'm going to cause it to show up. I'm going to cause it to show up. And so even, even as we look at, uh, we look at him cause, causing it to show up, we have to, like never before, now we have to be diligent in what we are saying. You just can't say anything now. Don't we know that death and life in the power of the tongue that I have given you the ability to open up your mouth and decree a thing and it shall be established. But you're worrying about it in your mind. How is this going to happen? It'll never happen according to your mind. Because the, the, the word of God tells us, lean not. To, and what's wrong with your own understanding? You know what? That's it. That's what's wrong with it. It's your own understanding. You're trying to figure out stuff and you can't sleep at night. You're trying to figure out stuff and your blood pressure is off the roof. You're trying to figure out stuff and you're walking around just as anxious as you can be because you're trying to rationalize and make sense of it in your mind. But God says, what I'm doing in your life, I'm not calling you to operate up here. I've given you the power in your mouth to speak a thing and it shall be manifested. I want to ask you, what are you, what are you saying? I, I'm, I'm not asking you what are you thinking. Look at your neighbor and say, what, what, what are you saying? What are you, what, look at your neighbor, what, what are you, what are you, what are, look at that other neighbor and say, what are you, what are you saying? What are you saying? Because God says, what I'm desiring to do in your life, I will only come for what you're saying. Oh, well, I ain't for all this confession stuff. I ain't for all, all right, well, well, stay broke, stay sick, stay hurt, stay in darkness. But when you look at what God is desiring to do, let's go to Genesis. I want to, I want to drop this. I want to drop this. I want to, y'all helping me this afternoon. Go ahead, point to me one more time. Say, help him, Lord. Help him, Lord. All right. All right. All right. Now point to yourself and say, Lord, help me to help me. Help me. Help me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, uh, I need some help, baby. I need some. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at that other neighbor and say, I'm tore up from the floor up. I need some help. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, you don't know what I dealt with this year, but the enemy thought he would hit me in so many different directions. But the word of God stands up over our life and say, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. God said, I've helped you. Did not I say I am a very present help? Can we give God a praise for all that he has brought us through? Look at this. Now, we can do better than that. We can do better than that. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, God. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. And you know what I love? You know what I love about it? You didn't do it yourself. I can't get over folk who think they're self-made and they don't need the Lord. Uh, 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 well, 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 they died in every eye and cross it. Tell your neighbor that ain't my story. <laughs> look, look at your neighbor, look at your story and say, baby, I got some boogie bears in my closet. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look at that other neighbor. Say, I got some things God's still working on in my life. No, no, no. I ain't arrived yet. But this one thing, I forget those things that are by. Tell your neighbor, I'm pressing on. I'm pressing on. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pressing. Look, look, look at that neighbor. Say, hey, oh, 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 you, 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 you got folk hating on you, and, and you ain't even hit your real blessing yet. They jealous over your surface blessings. But God says, I'm about to open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there won't even be rum enough for you to receive. And God says, what, what I'm doing in your life, did not I say I will make your enemies your footstool? Did not I tell you many of the afflictions of the righteous, but I'm going to deliver you out of them all? God said, just stand still and see my salvation because I'm going to put my insignature on you. Hallelujah. And when you show up, hear this in the Holy Ghost. When you show up, the whole atmosphere change. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me on that. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Say the whole atmosphere, the whole atmosphere. Let, let's, let's look at the text. Yeah, y'all y'all play with me. Y'all 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 play with me. Y'all play with me. Look, look at this. Look at look at your neighbor and say, stop playing with them. Stop playing with them. All right, all right. I'm 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 trying to drop something. I'm trying to I'm trying to I'm trying to drop something so we can get a hold of what God is calling us to be diligent to the words that we're saying, that we, you, you know, and Rebecca talks about uh, 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 right division, make it plain, and, and then, and then uh, in the end, it shall speak and it shall not lie. Hear this, that what you have written, what you have been decreeing and all of that, you are speaking for the vision. But God says, as we enter into this year, the vision will speak for itself. And so you are speaking for it. You have been advertising it. But even as you have been advertising it, now the real deal is about to show up on your behalf. And I prophesy over your life that 2023 shall be the best year of your life, that you shall experience the favor of God. You shall experience overflow. You shall experience the hand of God in every arena of your life. And even as you do it, God says, I'm going to manifest it. Hallelujah. Let's look at this. Somebody shout, do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Now, can we put those hands together and give God a quick praise? Somebody say, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Yeah. You've been strategizing and you've been mapping and you've been researching the vision in the business plan and, and shifting this career and all of this. God says, now I'm opening up an avenue. Hallelujah. I'm opening up an avenue that you will walk under an open heaven in this year like you have never experienced before. And God says, even as you walk under this open heaven, there will be no lack in your life. There will be no, 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 no lack. There will be uh, uh, no challenges that will cause you to give up. But God says, everything that pertains to you and your assignment, I'm going to execute. It. I'm going to bring it to pass. I'm going to revisit you with everything I've spoken over your life. And I'm going to show you that I'm not a man that I should lie. Now somebody ought to give God a praise right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've been waiting a long time. But I'm here to tell you that help is on the way. I'm here to tell you that God is about to make the crooked places straight. 
And for that person that's been dealing with a, a, a major warfare year after year and, and say, Lord, I, I just seem like I'm restricted or I'm in bondage. I hear the Lord saying that I'm setting you free of, of, of captors and those who have uh, ha had their hands on you trying to control and manipulate and to direct you. I speak the liberty of the Lord for every spirit that's been trying to to restrict you and control you and manipulate you that the yoke is broken that you are no longer under bondage you are no longer under witchcraft you are no longer under the spell every last soulish tie that's been trying to maneuver in your life is now being broken by the power of the anointing of God somebody put those hands together and bless our God Somebody say, do it, Lord, do it, Lord, do it, 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 do it. Ah, Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. I feel, look at your neighbor and say, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. Yeah, yeah, I I, I may run down Hall Street to 288. <laughs> but but if I run, make sure I got my uh, 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 fast toll with me too. <laughs> Let, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's go to Genesis chapter one. I want to. I want to lift this. What are you saying? What are you saying? He says, I, I've given you my word, but you're not saying anything. And so you, he says, I hasten. I'm getting ready to get started. I'm in the starting block to run after you to fulfill the word that I've given you. I hasten to perform my word, but if you're not releasing and I'm just staying in the starting block. Somebody say, I release it. Let's look at this, let's look at this, let's look at this. Genesis chapter one, are you there? Uh, Gen Genesis chapter 1 verse number 1 in the beginning God created uh, the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water verse number 3 and God said now let's look at that once again because we look at that with familiar eyes where we miss some things that God is saying when we look at verse number 1 we see that God created uh, the heaven and earth. And so we see the sovereignty of God. We see the mastery of God, that the earth is the Lord's in the fullness there. We see the splendor in creation. Then automatically we go to verse number two. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. But look at this. It's, it's as if in verse number one, we're walking in one direction. We see intentions, we see the aim of God. In verse number one, that it's uh, uh, created, he created the heaven and earth. But then in verse number two, we see a radical shift. In verse number two, it says that the earth is now without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Look at what happened. When we look at Isaiah uh, chapter 14, it talks about uh, Lucifer, son of the morning, that you are fall, uh, you, you have fell down to the earth. So between verse number one and verse number two, we see that Lucifer comes and brings disorder. But we lift it up just as a poetic reading, it, but we don't understand the narrative shift. It's created, uh, 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 heaven and earth is created and beauty and all of that. And then in verse number two, look at the condition. It says, now the earth is without form, it's chaotic. We see that the earth is now empty. We see now that darkness is upon the face of the deep. And, and so between verse number one and two is what's called the gap, G-A-P, the gap theory, where, where that's where we look at the fall of Lucifer. That's where we look at interruptions that's taking place in our lives. 
Man of God, you started out serving God. But something traumatic happened that you have not been able to rebound. Woman of God, you started out loving God, but you've experienced some pain along the way. And now in the midst of your journey, you know God has a call, but your whole life, it deals with that of being without form, void, and darkness. Hallelujah. But look at your neighbor and say, God ain't done yet. This is what I want us to get a hold of. You, you see, we see all of that confusion in verse number two. But, 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 but women of God, look at what happens in, 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 uh, at the ending part of verse number two. In the, spirit of the, uh, in the spirit of God, move on the face of the deep. This is what I want us to understand as we start speaking. We have to go with this model that God lifts up in Genesis. Confusion. Now look at this. Look, look, look at me on this one. Confusion is down here on this order. Chaos is down here on this order. Darkness, trouble, all of that pain, heartache, all the way on this order. But then we see the text, the Spirit of God hovered. And so in other words, the Spirit of God this, now this is what I want us to hear. The Spirit of God disconnected from confusion. You want to know why you're not seeing everything. Maybe you're still tied up to confusion. Maybe you're listening to the news 24-7. Maybe you're concerned about, is it a Republican or Democrat? Maybe you're concerned about, I don't have this and I don't have that. You're operating in a confused state. But the Spirit of God hovered. The Spirit of God, this is what I want you to hear. The Spirit of the Lord disconnected. And then it said, the Spirit of the Lord hovered brooded over, and this is what I want us to understand. As long as you stay in confused situations, it ain't going to be nothing but a bunch of arguments. Uh, well, let me tell you what I think. Let me do all of this. It ain't nothing but debate at that level. Einstein said it this way. Einstein said, you never solve a problem at the level that it was created on. And so if we talk about a level three problem, we have to do what? We have to elevate ourselves to operate at a level four or higher to solve it. If we stay, now hear this, if we stay on that level, all we can do is have debates and dialogue. And so that's why when we look at the political arena and all of that, they're on the same level. And so it really don't matter who's in the White House. It, it really don't matter because it's on this level. But God says, what I'm doing, I'm anointing sons and daughters that I can release them to governmental systems. I'm, re, I'm anointed sons and daughters that I can release to the educational system. I'm anointed sons and daughters that I can release to the legal system. So it's not about just coming to church and passing out. It's about coming to the house of God and being equipped for the work of the ministry. And the work of the ministry don't take place in here. It takes place out there. We fighting over where we're going to set or who's singing my song and all of that. No, baby, that's lower level. We got to elevate ourselves. Look at this. Look at this. Somebody say elevate, elevate. All right, y'all y'all got that? Y'all got that? Y'all with me on that? All right, so now, now just look, look at this. Look at this. Look, look at this. 
the Spirit of God hovered over. And in this elevated place, you don't hear from the Lord if you are engaged in lower order living 24-7 and then think I'm doing something going to church for an hour, hour and a half. But if I have not guarded my heart all week long, I've been listening to confusion and chaos. I haven't fed myself. And so now all I'm going to do is respond uh, or react to what's taking place on this level. But God says, no, I, I'm requiring you to disconnect and then to elevate in, in this elevation. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I will say, hear this, you don't say unless you are dwelling. Saying comes after dwelling. Be still and know that I'm God. God says, elevate. I want to I wanna speak some things into your heart. You got to unplug from all of what's going on so, so that you can spend time with me so I can commune with you. And as I commune with you, look at the text. Look at the text. You can tell where people are living based on what they're saying. If they are minding things of all the uh, girl, let me tell you, I just bought this last weekend. I got this and I got that. All right, all right, all right. I got red bottoms. I got blue bottoms. I got no bottoms. I got all it is. All it is. All it. All right, all right, all right. I, if if we if we dwell in there, all, all we do is talk about stuff of the flesh. But if we are elevated, we understand now that our conversation changed, and we talk now about God is anointing me with generational wealth to break the stronghold that's been holding my family back and I'm about to start another business. I'm about to make some investments. I'm about to sow something in the kingdom of God because I understand as long as the earth remain, there will be seed time and harvest. Look at this. Look at this. Then, then I'm closing. Can, can I have two more minutes? Let me see, let me see your hand if I can have two more minutes. All right, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Yes, I think I can finish this one. All right, look at this, look, look at this. All right, the, the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the earth, and then verse number three, in God what? In God said, you don't speak unless you've been in the elevator. To hear what God is saying. That's where the download is taking place. That's what God says. What I'm desiring to do in your life. He says, uh, when we look at the text, the word of God says, and, and God said, God says now, I created you in my image. And if I must speak in God, I create you with the power to speak and to create your reality. And if you don't like what you're dealing with, God said, come on back and let us reason together. Let us spend some time together so I can commune with you spirit to spirit so I can tell you the thoughts I have for you and the plans that I have for your life. I know that your father was not around. I know you went through some challenges in your life. But God says, even while you were in your mother's womb, I had an assignment for you. 
and I need you to come back home so you can hear me and so that your direction and your orchestration will come for me. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, I hear it. Now let's give God a great big praise right here. Lord, I, I hear it. Hear it, hear, 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 hear. Let me, let, me, let me say this. Regardless of what you're dealing with, this year, I need you to confess and I need you to prophetically decree a thing. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't look at, don't look at what you see. Look at what he has said. And you have to see a thing before you see a thing. And that takes place when you disengage and you allow the spirit of the Lord to make deposits in, in your heart. So when we look at this, even as we go into 2023, I want us to understand even that we're saying over our houses, we're saying over this ministry, we're saying that, that the Lord is our healer, we're saying that the sickness shall not dwell in my body, even in the midst of what's taking place, God, with COVID and all of that, we are declaring and we're speaking the the word of the Lord that we shall live and we shall not die and we shall declare the glory of the Lord in the midst of cancer, in the midst of diabetes. We declare prophetically that my body is a temple. And I speak over your life, every last one of you, that, 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 that the enemy shall not abort the assignment of God that you are entering into the best season of your life. And I speak longevity to you. I speak not only longevity, but I speak life, an abundant life to you. That the God of more than enough will manifest in this year like you have never seen before. I hear the Lord say, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what I'm about to do in your life. God says, I'm about to put you on display and people will know that this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. But he's coming for our words. He's coming. He's coming for our words. He's coming for our words. Oh, yeah, we had to go through some heartaches this year. We, we lost some loved ones. We dealt with some financial challenges. We dealt with some mental conditions. But I don't believe he brought you this far. To lead you. God says I'm going to be right there with you. That people will know. Lo I'm with you. And if I'm with you. I'm more than the whole world. I guess you. I hear the Lord saying. St stand right there. I hear the Lord saying stand. I got you. I got you. It's not up to you to do it. I just need you to open up your mouth. And when you open up your mouth, when you open up your mouth, didn't I say my word isn't going to return to me void? When you open up your mouth, I make the crooked places straight in your life. When you open up your mouth, I bring healing to your house. When you open up your mouth, I bring peace to your mind. I hear the Lord saying this. I hear the Lord saying that he's going to be magnified and he's going to take pleasure, hear this as I close, in your prosperity. Hear this prophetically. Today is the brokest you ever be. Y'all ain't hear me. Y'all ain't hear me. Y'all ain't, ain't hear me. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. This is the lowest. You will never be broke another day in your life. He says, I'm the one who gives you power to obtain wealth so that my covenant is established within you. You've been saying that I'm your shepherd. What kind of shepherd is that if I don't take care for you? I'm your, because I'm your shepherd, you shall not want. Because I'm your shepherd, I'm going to lead you in, 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 in green pastures. Because I'm your shepherd, I'm going to cause you to dwell among still waters. Ah, Shandala Bakata. Because I'm the shepherd. I hear the Lord saying, I'm going to supply every last need. Hallelujah. Every last need. Every, every last need. But God says, I need you to say that. I need you to make that declaration to the atmosphere. Because there's some territorial spirits. And there's some generational spirits that's been trying to hold you captive. But God says when you declare some things, hallelujah, when you declare some things, I hasten to execute it. And God says not only will I supply every last need, not only in resources, but God says I'm going to release to you this year. Hallelujah. I'm going to release to you this year the greatest level of peace you have ever dealt with. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord saying that there remains a rest for you. I hear the Lord say, just come unto me. Oh, you who worry. You took care of others and you poured into others. And they ain't treat you the way you treated them. And you say, God, I ain't got no more to give. God said, come on, bring it. Come on. Bring, bring that to me. Bring it. Bring, 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 bring that to me. Yeah. I'm going to give you a rest. A rest. Yeah. Yeah. So don't stay there. You can't rest there. Yeah. And there remaineth the rest for the people of God. I speak over your life, over this ministry, that this year shall be a year without stress, without strain, and without struggle. I hear the Lord saying to say to this house, cast all your cares. Somebody said, I got some stuff I can't tell. He said, oh yeah, I know what you're dealing with. I know what you're dealing with. Let's stand in the presence of the Lord. Let's stand in the presence of the Lord. Hear this. Woman of God, every seed that you have sown into the lives of family and friends, and they didn't even come back to say thank you. You've done so much behind the scenes. I hear the Lord saying to say to you that he is not unrighteous concerning your labor. And how you have ministered and you do minister to the saints. 
I hear the Lord saying that he's going to bring a reward to you. You mind if I lift my hands up? I speak a reward. Yes. On you. I speak a reward. Just, just go ahead and put your hands on, on you on yourself. And I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. The Lord says, I'm coming for your word. And God says, now hear this in the Holy Ghost. He, say, he says, I'm making you the prophet over your life. <laughs> Y'all running behind folk with oil from Jerusalem and handkerchief from Jordan and all of that. God says, no. If David encouraged himself that you stand up every day and you go to that mirror and you prophesy. You prophesy. I hear the doctor's report. I hear what the doctors are saying. And you know what? That may be the facts. And the facts deals with the natural. We don't deny what the doctors are saying. That's the facts. But God says, you shall know the truth. Oh, y'all got to catch this. In the truth shall set you free. What is it going to set you free from? The truth is going to set you free from the facts. So he sent his word. And he I speak to every last vessel who has lifted up their hands with conditions in their bodies. I speak the healing power of the word of God. God, you sent your word. <laughs> oh yeah, he's doing the day it is right there. He sent his word and he healed you. Yeah. He healeth all of your diseases. I speak for healing in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Last thing I want to pray for. The Lord had me dealing with this just a little bit earlier. There, there's some solar core, soulish time that there's some jobs or some relationships or some situations that you've gone through but you haven't been able to end it. You haven't been able to end it. You may have even relocated physically or relationally or whatever but it's still a tentacle in your soul. I speak the release. Hallelujah. The release of every soul tie that's trying to hook you. How do you know it's trying to hook you? Every time you move out, it hurts even the more. Yeah. I speak deliverance. And I speak freedom. Hallelujah. 
in the name of the Lord. For the next 35 seconds, can we put our hands together and open up our mouths and give God? Now, can we give him a praise worthy of his name? Just go and embrace Jesus. Just go ahead and embrace Jesus. Man of God, you made it through. Woman of God, you made it through. Yeah. You can make it through this year. You can make it through every year. God says, I'm about to put this house on this year. I'm about to put this house on this year. God, we speak over the life of the man of God and the woman of God. God, I thank you for strength to their bodies. God, I thank you for revelation like never before. God, turn him and turn her into God like a madman that they see the Lord high and lifted up. Let them not be timid one bit, but I speak over this house and over their life that this year will be a year of crazy faith for this house and for every vessel connected. God, I speak that wealth and riches shall be in their house. I speak your peace. And Father, what you have anointed with the head, it shall flow to this body. I thank you, Lord, even now we prophesy to the four winds that there are individuals in this region that's in a holding pattern waiting to hear the voice of these angels. God, I thank you that media shall be expanded. You shall enlarge their coast, their territory. Hallelujah. God, we release even the liberty that's on them to every son and daughter of this house, everyone that's working in the marketplace, for those who are faithful in their job or in their careers, I think you're stirring up, God, just an anointing of creativity that this is the time that they're stepping out and every need shall be supplied. I speak peace and blessings over spirit of fire. Fellowship. And we call the enemy a liar that he shall not touch this house. That those who are planted in this house, they shall flourish. That men of God will be drawn like metal to a magnet. That this will be a house where men are growing in their walk with the Lord. That this will be a house where men are walking in revelation and in integrity and in strength and humility. God, I speak over this house that women of God that's connected to this house will be free to soar without any restrictions. That there won't be intimidation by the men in their lives and the 
religious systems in order. But I speak to the Deborahs in here. And I call you forth to arise like never before. I speak to the children that they shall excel at every level. <laughs> I call forth scholarships and grants and opportunities. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. Can we put our hands together and celebrate the Lord in here? Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what a word. What a word. So, Father God, we just want to pray over the man of God. Father, we thank you for sending us such a blessing to this house. Father God, we just pray that every word that he has spoken over us, that it will return back to him. God, we thank you that you're going to move in everything that he sets his hands to do. We speak increase even over his ministry. Do it for him, God. And even them secret things that he's been praying to you, asking you for. Oh, God, we thank you that you're going to reveal it. There's going to be an in suddenly that take place that he's even going to look and say, wow, that was fast. <laughs> so we thank, we're thanking you for it now, God. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory, glory to God. So we thank you, Father, before we dismiss. We just want to give an altar call. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is, if there's anyone here hmm, that just want to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, you can just raise your hand if online. Just know that you can be in no situation that God will not forgive you. He loves you in spite of. In fact, he's the only one that will give us unconditional love. Hmm. Unconditional love. So we thank you, Father. It's so simple. Just know if you confess with your mouth, you can just say something. It's no big to do. You know, so many people say, you know, they have to have the exact words. You know, just ask him to forgive you. You know, change. Just change. Turn around. We all will fall short again. But it's just knowing that we can always go back to God and say, God, forgive me. I think that's why so many of us just get caught up. So many people don't want to accept Christ anymore because we think we have to be perfect. You know, it's not about being perfect because I tell you, I thought I've been in this thing for a long time, but every sometimes, you know, them folks get on your nerve at work, people in traffic, they jumping in front of you. And sometimes we just have to say, God, forgive me. That's it. That's all you need to do. Amen. So, Father God, as we leave this place, let no harm, no danger, no mishaps, no misfortune come to us. Let the angels of the Lord be encamped around about us. We're thanking you for it now. And it's in your son Jesus' name that we pray, praise, and give your name the glory. Amen. Amen. We are dismissed. Hallelujah.